Good morning, PTI Nice family. Uh, happy Monday. Happy day after Super Bowl Monday. I think people call it Monday or something like that. But um, welcome. So I am going to get started right away. Um, it's been kind of a whirlwind of a week for me personally. Um, starting last Tuesday, we kicked off our entry level world tour. Um, so Mike was at DeSalle's, I believe. Hey Jordan, morning Sean. Um, Mike was at DeSalle's University. He gave a four hour kind of kind of lecture talk um, on pop health and, and kind of this idea of prevention and health promotion. And then I kicked it off at um, my alma mater, WSSU, um, and, and great reception. It was really exciting. And then that same day, um, a whole group of us across the nation found out we're, we're finally kind of through that next step, went from students um, to officially licensed physical therapists. So that was really exciting. Um, and then and on the APHPT side, we're kind of finalizing the details of our CSM, our crew of APHPT event. Um, so, so keep an eye out for that stuff. And then last night, as a um, born into a family of Eagles fans, the Super Bowl um, that was just absolutely incredible. I know that for me personally, my just a sidebar real quick, my dad um, talk about like a connect moment, bringing it back into APHPT speech. Um, my dad for 15 years, every Sunday that the Eagles play has had 20 of our closest family friends over into the basement um, to watch. And those guys have been there for each other through thick and thin, um, through some really rough times. Um, both in, in sports and in personal lives, and no matter what was going on um, in their lives, they, they came every Sunday and they were there for each other. And they really got each other through some really hard personal stuff. Um, so seeing them all celebrate and they're hugging each other and crying, it was just this incredible connect moment for me um, to get to watch them. So that was, that was really cool. And then finally today, I um, officially kick off my in-house residency of SOAR at Proactivity here in New Jersey. So I'm back Jersey side and have some Wawa coffee to celebrate. Um, so a lot, lot going on. I feel like I've hit like a speed strip from the Mario Brothers um, Mario Kart. So, so we'll get right into it. And it, it, kind of this idea of a, a whirlwind of a week set me up. Um, for what I want to talk about today. It's just something that's been kind of working in my mind over the past week. And it's really a fusion, a mashup, I'm calling it, of, of Mike's talk last week about kind of uh, our attempt to always beat the competition and, and how we need to be, be able to move beyond that mindset because um, the problem's just too big at this point to, to operate in that mindset. And then mashing that up with um, Dustin's talk on how fear impacts for performance, how fear impacts movement, um, and kind of taking it from that literal sense to a little bit more of a, a figurative sense. And so those themes have been really just kind of working in my mind throughout this whole week. It, it started at the WSSU, our, our kickoff to our entry-level world tour, um, as we're calling it. And, you know, I was just taken aback by the response from the students and the excitement in that room and how everyone had, you know, these amazing visions for their future and what they were going to be able to do and they wanted to make a difference. And a big group of them joined that day or the next day um, to join the APHPT. And I was just so moved by their excitement. Um, and then I really, you know, as I left and I started to process things, I, I started to compare that with a lot of the stories um, that I hear from kind of people out there in the real world of our profession and especially some of the new grads that, that I talk to um, that, you know, that excitement and that energy has, has sort of started to fizzle out um, even soon after school. And, you know, you get into, you hear people talk about this grind and, and it just wears you down and, and things like burnout are so common. And I started to think like, what, what is that disconnect? Here we have, have, students that are just so excited they're amped up to get out there and do something and make a difference and then people not even out one year that are just kind of worn down by the system already and I thought what is with that like what does that to people um what is it within our profession or, or within you know healthcare or our society that's causing that to happen so quickly and as I kind of thought about it in terms um 
of my own life. Like what has done that to me? What has caused that like light that I feel like I have inside of me to dim at times, um, as cheesy as that may sound. And as I really thought about it, um, it kind of all boiled down to fear. Um, at different times in my life where I was operating in a way that I let fear control me, whether it was fear of failure or fear of rejection or fear of what other people would think about me or, or the outcomes of what I was trying to do, it was times where I let fear take over that, that really dimmed that light inside me um, and that caused me to become almost stagnant and stuck. And so, you know, I kind of thought, well, well, what causes that fear? Like what, what brings about that fear within ourselves? And, and it kind of boiled down to what Mike was talking about last week. But, but instead of kind of that external competition, it's almost an internal competition within ourselves. When I really think about it for me, it's those two voices inside of me, the one on the left shoulder, the one on the right, the, the one telling me, these are your dreams. These are your aspirations. This is your purpose. This is what you're here to do. And you're capable of this. And then the other side of you, um, the other voices that are those of self-doubt, um, those of insecurities, those of, of will you really be able to accomplish this? And when those things battle each other out um, and the side of self-doubt wins, then we are living in this state of fear, um, of failure. And so, you know, when when we live in a place where we're afraid, when we're, when we're letting that fear control us, it's easy to become stagnant, right? It's easy to kind of stay in one place and it impacts our ability to move. Um, it, and, the, and the longer that we stay in that place, the longer we stay still, the harder and harder it becomes to move. So like J Dustin was talking about um, with people who are afraid of movement or afraid of falling. And so what is the tendency to do? We move less, we stay still. Um, and we all know that the longer and longer that we stay still, the harder and harder it becomes to move again. Um, the longer we sit in that comfortable place, the longer we sit in that lazy boy, the harder and harder it is to stand up again. And it gets to the point where eventually we're kind of just in that comfort zone. We're stuck there until someone helps to pull us out, right? We, we have get to a point where we need help. And so we'll just, Dustin said this amazing thing that I just love last week, um, and he was talking about kind of how to, how to, you know, incorporate this in treatment of people who have fear of, of falling or things like that. And he said, we need to, we need to bring people to the edge of fear. We need to operate on the edge of fear. And what I love about that is that it gives us this permission to start small, right? It gives us this permission to not take a giant leap, you know, in the pop health world, I think, um, Oftentimes it's intimidating because it seems so big. Well, I'm not ready to quit my practice and jump into, you know, just working in an employer space or just working at the policy level. Um, but it gives us permission to start small with little things like, hey, maybe I can ask some questions today that target lifestyle behaviors in the clinic. Or maybe I can, you know, go back to my library and, and reapproach them about um, giving a talk on, on a health behavior. And so something that when, when Dustin was talking about how do we tackle this, right? How do we tackle the fears um, that impact our performance? He said, you have to start by identifying fears by asking questions. And so I think that's super applicable to this scenario for us, right? And when we kind of look at this in the larger life picture, we start by really reflecting on, am I letting fear um, dictate my direction? Am I, op am I getting comfortable operating on the edge of fear? And I love, um, so I've been reading this book called Flourish, and it's by a amazing, the father of um, positive psychology, Martin Seligman. And I've been reading it for like a year because I just keep going back and rereading the chapter before. But, um, but he's talking about snipers, and he's talking about how we train snipers. And we don't, um, we don't, train snipers by, you know, kind of guarding them from, from these environments. We don't guard them, um, from being tired. We don't, you know, kind of shelter them. Um, they're immersed into a really difficult situation. So I want to read this passage. Um, he's talking about kind of our society, how our, 
how our tendency is to shelter people. We shelter our children to keep them protected from bad things. In the medical field, we oftentimes do that with pain, right? We shelter, we wanna keep people from pain rather than you know, helping them to learn how to function through it. So he said, that is not how snipers are trained, however. Instead, you keep them up for three days and have them practice shooting when they are dead tired. That is, you teach snipers to deal with the negative state they're in, to function well even in the presence of fatigue. Similarly, fighter pilots are selected from rugged individuals who do not scare easily. But many things happen to fighter pilots that scare the pants off even the toughest ones. Again, flight instructors don't call on therapists to teach them the tricks of anxiety reduction, thereby training candidates to become relaxed fighter pilots. Rather, the trainer sends the jet into a dive straight for the ground until the trainee is terrified. And then the trainee, in a state of terror, must learn to pull up. And so I love that because, because I think it really applies to what we're talking about, right? It, resilience is, is not learned through sheltering ourselves from fear. And we don't learn, we learn to thrive despite the environment, right? That's really what he's talking about. We have to learn to function despite the negative state that might be all around us. And I think the same is true for living, learning to operate on the edge of our fears, right? If, if we shelter ourselves from them, then we never learn to thrive there. We never learn to thrive in that state of discomfort. We never learn to get up out of the lazy boy, to get out of our comfort zone and push ourselves to do things that we know that we're capable of. And if we do that, if we, if we allow ourselves um, to get stuck, to become stagnant, then we will not move. Um, we will not move forward and we will not be able to fix the problem that we're facing and our population simply cannot handle that. And so, you know, personally for me, when I think about this concept of kind of learning to live on the edge of our fear, you know, it's, it's easier said than done, right? It's very easy to stay in our comfort zone, to stay where it feels safe. Um, I would be completely lying if I said right now I didn't have some fear, you know, I'm, hundreds of miles away from my home and my husband and, and I'm here, um, you know, and there's certainly doubts that, you know, am I going to be able to do this? Am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Am I, am I going to be able to adapt? Um, but you know, when I really reflect on my life, I just, I cannot think of a time that great things or great growth, um, came from me sitting inside my comfort zone. I think some of the biggest, moments in my life, moments where I really found myself, where I really found my purpose um, and found out who I was came from incredible discomfort, incredible pain even, um, and times when I was scared to death. So, you know, I just, I just, um, I'm really thankful for this community, this ICE community, the, the APHPT community, um, and, and my now proactivity family for kind of being, you know, an environment that that helps me feel despite fears, like I have people to support me, like I'm safe to make small little um, adjustments to my path, to live on the edge of my fears. And um, if there's anyone out there that, that feels like they're a little bit trapped, I just encourage you to start asking yourself those hard questions. Am I allowing fear to dictate my direction? Um, and if the answer is yes, then find little ways every day to just live on the edge of that fear. And soon that edge will move further and further and it'll be amazing what we're capable of doing. So thank you guys so much for chiming in. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful Monday and has lots of coffee to get, <laughs> get you through. Um, and go Eagles. Bye guys.